regular meeting of the Board of Education to order at uh, 7.33. Please stand. Ms. Rankler. Um, with this past weekend being um, such a holy weekend with Easter and Passover, um, I just want to have everyone take time to remember those people that weren't at our holiday celebrations this past weekend. Pledge allegiance to the flag to the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Fire evacuation announcement. In case an alarm should sound requiring us to evacuate this chamber, the exits are as follows. The double doors immediately to the rear of the room and down the stairs to the, uh, stairs to the outside. Additionally, there's an exit door to my left. Go through the doors, take an immediate left, proceed through the stairwell doors, and down the stairs exiting in the rear of the building. Roll call, Kathy. This is Rancourt. Here. This is Suzak. Here. <clears throat> Mr. Feely. Here. Mr. Grady. Here. Ms. Hall. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Janitis. Here. Mrs. LeBlanc. Here. Chairman Neville. Here. Item six, approval of minutes. Uh, I've had a request that we uh, hold this off until the next meeting. Uh, Mrs. Hall has a number of, of questions about it, but she doesn't have her, her notes with her. Does anybody object if we uh, they no, put it on the table? There's a number of things that yeah. we'll, we'll fix and they'll make more sense. Just by a consensus? So we'll, they yes. could email me what they want fixed and I could fix it. Yeah. Before the next meeting. Right. Very good. Okay. Number, item seven, board guest. I believe we have representatives of our kite committee coming up to speak to us. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I th is this our annual meeting to talk about the Gunstein uh, uh, request here? A grant, I guess? Yes. Hi, I'm Pam Brown. I'm the director of social services, and I'm on the kite leadership work group. And I'm going to have Amy and Chris introduce themselves. I'm Amy Whitbro, the partnership coordinator for the schools and also on the leadership work group. And I'm Chris Gummo. I am the coordinator for KITE. And we're here tonight because we would like to uh, reapply to the Graustein Memorial Foundation um, to, for a two-year grant um, for up to $50,000 a year um, that would enable us to um, sorry, uh, to uh, put into action to implement our community plan that we have been um, developing. Um, as I think you all know, um, we have a community plan that um, we are about to uh, release to the community in a, and have a launch on May 9th, um, and it'll be over at 100 High Street. And the board will be re receiving formal invitations. But um, the plan has a lot of uh, detail in it, and we're hoping to be able to uh, raise funds and to be able to uh, provide real programming and uh, in the future for the young children in Enfield. OK. Are there any, any questions about the grant? Joyce? Not a question. But thank you. We've reached the implementation stage. I think I've asked you that in previous years. Yeah. And you're here now. It's wonderful. Yeah. You will be going right along with the direction the state is taking toward that universal pre-K that we've all talked about for a long time. Thank you. Anybody else? I applaud the work that you guys are doing. And I'm, I'm happy, like Joyce, that we're at the implementation stage. I just have one question. You said up to 50000 How How does uh, that, that work? Well, the Memorial Fund will uh, give, on the strength of our application, will get will award up to $50,000 to each community that applies. So um, we would have to match that by 50%. Um, so um, if they were to give us 40000 we would have to have a $20,000 match. OK. So, the, so if, if we match it and our application is, is uh, uh, you know, satisfactory, then and, uh, we, we would get that amount of money then? Yes. OK. Yes. That, that's a great deal if we can do it. That's fantastic. Yes. I'm sorry. Kevin. 
I'm sorry, um, on the matching funds, where would that come from? Uh, well, we are uh, meeting with biz small and large businesses um, to raise the, the funds. And uh, we have about uh, $7,000 pledged so far, um, and uh, we have, what's that, 18000 more to go. But we're, um, we're ver already presented before Rotary. Um, the uh, LEGO is assisting us in helping to uh, raise that match. And uh, we're, we're in conversation with a number of large businesses already. So we're, we're very hopeful. Um, we are planning on also applying to the town council to um, uh, ha have a grant through the Neighborhood Assistance Act, which would enable uh, businesses to get uh, a reduction in their state taxes for a contribution to Kite and to the... Is there a deadline attached to your fundraising? Uh, well, there, we will be doing fundraising every year, but... Um, well, in, to your in, matching... To our matching... Our, uh, we would need to have the, the funds um, pledged um, by uh, June 30th. How many years have you folks been involved with uh, this grant? Quite a few, I think. 2001. Okay. Yeah. And have we got it every year since then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all these funds, the, the matching funds come from outside, Kevin. They're, they're all community funds. And you even take individual contributions. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. what I thought. Uh, and they do a wonderful job with that. I, I think that foundation is fantastic. Amazing. Uh, it really is amazing how much money they do contribute to this community because I know other groups do it as well. I think the Loaves and Fishes do it and, and several others, and they all get grants. And I, I think it's a, it's, it's a powerful uh, uh, foundation in terms of the good that they do. So uh, are there any other questions from the board members? Yes, Tony. Just working briefly with uh, or somewhat with Amy, and um, we're, they're working very hard on this whole plan, but at the same time also d getting some uh, data mm -hmm. you know, so that there's some baseline data. And so I just want to compliment them because I know we've worked with Dave uh, Bechtel and I know that Judy's planning some workshops. I mean, that's a great accomplishment. There'd be some baseline data there so we can move forward. With one, that. one of the strengths of being a collaborative is that we're all in this together and we're all working together. And it shows when we, we hire these consultants, do it with our grant money, it really shows us where we need to be paying attention if we're going to move ahead. And data collection has come up as something that if we are going to be able to apply for grants in the future, we really need to address. Um, and we have an excellent consultant who's come in and the schools, Tony and Judy and Fred, have worked with him and actually tomorrow morning Judy and I are doing a training for the primary secretaries because we've changed a bunch of screens on eSchool. So this year for kindergarten registration, it will be the first year that we're going to be collecting really solid data, that it's not wishy-washy, we know what we're collecting and that's going to help us in the future. And you're looking at it over time to see how these kids do over time. And, exactly. and the nice part about it, it's not an event. This is a process that you've been involved with for 10 or uh, 12 years, and, and it's, it's evolved in, in a very, very uh, you know, positive way. So uh, I think it's great, the, the direction you're going. And it certainly will have some impact down the road in terms of uh, uh, looking at, at what uh, uh, things kids had early on and, and then how that plays out as they go through the school years. Mr. Chair? Yes. Does that additional data include what preschool the students have been to? That's one of the screens we've changed. Now it's, it used to just be did they have preschool experience, check yes or no. And we, any of us that are involved in this work know that there's quality issues and we need to target certain providers more than others and we need to know where those children are coming from. So now it's a drop down screen and they will actually check where the preschool experience was. And we'll be able to search on all that data. Yes. That's great. That's great. That's way we'll be able to find out if a Head Start child, yes. by the time they're in sixth grade, exactly. has continued that gain, which is wonderful. Exactly. Thank you. We appreciate it. Now, my understanding, Dr. Gallagher, is we have this on our agenda later on for um, a vote. Yep. It's the um, first item, I believe, under new business. And basically what we're doing with that vote is just authorizing you to, to apply for the, the grant, correct? Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you all very much. We appreciate you being Thank here and you. the work Thank that you, you do. Thank you for having us. Thank you. The communications, we're at the, the audience uh, participation. Is there anyone here who wishes to address the board?
to Okay. Um, just uh, is it is it Paris? Feely? Am I correct reading that correctly? Yes, sir. Okay. Why don't you come on up if you would, please, to the microphone here. And is it is it Donna? Are you coming up together or separately? <laughs> That's fine. That's not, not a problem. Uh, I would just ask you that uh, we, we certainly welcome your comments, and uh, I'd just ask you if you'd please state your name and address, and uh, if you would uh, just uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, please refrain from any personal comments or anything like that and, and understand that the board may or may not respond during the, uh, the, the board comments to the questions that you may ask. So I can neither confirm nor deny those allegations at this juncture. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Paris Feely. I'm actually a guest from out of town. Uh, I, I live in uh, uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So. Okay. Were, were you intending to address the board, or you are just signing in as a guest? Signing in as a guest. Oh, okay. That, <laughs> no, welcome. But, uh, I thought you guys were actually putting me on here. <laughs> no, no, no. Teasing this me. Is the, this At the request of my brother, who is, of course, on your board. <laughs> yes, the Feely last name you would probably recognize. I, I thought this was totally what that was. You led me on here, didn't you? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what does he have to say? And, and, uh, and my, my poor wife, throat. who's extraordinarily shy, was, what, what's going on? I didn't know about this, so. <laughs> so thank, okay. We thank you for being here. I appreciate you having me. Thanks. There's some family stories here. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. You can grade him on his performance at uh, by the end of the we meeting. We deny your request. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Then we'll move on to board member comments, and I'll start from my left with our infill high rep. With the fourth quarter starting this week, um, Enfield High had a couple assemblies for the seniors and juniors. The juniors went to an informational assembly today about planning for college and what they can be doing to prepare for the applying process. And the seniors went to an assembly yesterday, which was kind of exciting because we discussed like senior activities at the end of the year. And then the senior expenses, which wasn't very exciting, but <laughs> that's okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Mom, Dad. <laughs> Jen? Um, I wanted to confirm that um, Effie's Amer Enfield Idol has their 20 contestants, and you can see the contestants on Facebook, and they're introducing them um, one at a time on Facebook and also on their website, and that will be May 4th, and tickets should be on sale, I think, next week. And it will be at his Nuntuck, which is a s smaller auditorium, so we hope to sell it out. Um, and then the other thing that I've noticed lately um, – is that a lot of parents obviously will have to send their children to summer camp and uh, there's been a lot of advertisements so uh, Parks and Rec has tons of fun um, camp and ERFC has the summer escape program and as Nuntuck has a wonderful summer program also with um, Lego building and engineering and um, I just wanted to say that you need to start looking now if you want to get into your children into summer camp. Never too early, right? Never too early, no. What, where are they going to be selling the tickets? Um, online, as far as I know. You can go right through PayPal and buy your tickets online. Okay. $10 per person. Very good. Thank you. Joyce? Well, actually, I don't have very much to say, except that that program that I described last month, the Skype presentation of mm -hmm. uh, Edward Clements, talking and the author talking to the students went very well he yes. is an excellent person to ask to ask questions from children which they did and he answered them thoroughly and appropriately it was very interesting and lasted almost an hour so he was very willing to continue talking with the kids who presented their own questions and it was a Skype presentation that worked yeah, it was in the press yeah, the press carried it yeah. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Feely? Kevin? Um, I, I have a couple of, couple of requests, if, if you don't mind. Um, the first one, I, I want to start by suggesting that I, I, I fully endorsed and do um, endorse the redistricting that we did, and I think it's a positive thing for the town. However, I also 
am aware that when you make a program, when you do any kind of a program in the real world scenario, there's usually a working out of the kinks or the bugs or tweaking that would happen. And there's been a number of requests that have come to this board from different parents in this town based on what we've done with the redistricting that would, in my mind, um, encourage us, at least me as a new board member who wasn't a part of the redistricting, that I'd hope that perhaps we could put on the agenda for a future board meeting to actually have a discussion to where I could get a better understanding. Because some of the requests that come by, and, and I've, I've spoken to the superintendent's office, I've spoken to members of this board about, seem rather easy and, and reasonable to understand why the request would be made, whereas others seem more self-serving, and I understand why we've declined them in the past. Um, in the past, Superintendent Gallagher has uh, indicated don't want to make exceptions because then they come out of the woodwork, which I understand and appreciate. However, before we go about, um, I believe it's 5113, the policy, before we go about looking at changing policies or exceptions, I, I would definitely like to understand some of the thought process that went behind the where we drew the lines mm -hmm. and and that way we can do our best to serve the people that that put us in the chair as opposed to just what i feel like is a constant barrage of just telling them no 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 because we don't want to open pandora's box and i certainly don't want to be guilty of opening that pandora's box but i do want to be able to address what seems to me to be some common sense issues out there I, I, it's in the box I wonder if you're, what, if, I just want to be clear if I hear you sure. correctly. Um, uh, the, the first thing you were talking about was uh, having an update on how it's going and, you know, this, uh, is it meeting what we thought it was going to do uh, when they set this up uh, last year? That uh, would be a start, yeah. Okay, I'm wondering if that may be the better place to start rather than going, and, and we can bring up the other issues as we go along, rather um, than focus on the issues. Um, it, it, get an update on how it's going and where, where the, well, the strong I, points are. I, I think I, more than just how it's going, I, I think I'd like to understand the foundation of lines were drawn at certain points. Why were they drawn? Who drew them? Because some of the argument or some of the discussion may be moot if I understand the thought process behind those. So as a foundation of understanding, and I don't know about other members of the board that are brand new, but, but having not been a part of that process, I, I find myself at a loss when, when looking at some of the requests and suggesting, you know what, some of these things make sense to me on the surface, but I understand that well-thinking people put their heads together and came up with this plan. So rather than going down the road of how is it going, which I certainly want to know, you know, benchmarking, I, I, I also very much would like to know what was the thought process in the lines that were drawn and what makes them so untouchable. Okay, and I guess I'm not clear, nor do I think this is the time to go into that. I think right. another time. I'm wondering, a, a lot of us paid a, a lot of close attention to what was going on, and we're, we're, we're part of it, so we, we may have that information. I'm wondering if at least that part of it may be worthwhile to sit down with, uh, you know, the, the administration and, and kind of go through it in detail on just why we did what we did, or even bring in, uh, you know, Judy or, or, or Greg, uh, because they were they were uh, key players in that, or even s several if, board members. If, if that's the avenue you want to take, well, but I'm I think it'd be worthy of putting of it, on an agenda in the future. I, I think that, I think anything time we do a major change like that, it's good to evaluate the change. Did it do what we wanted to? We had certain goals there, and, and, and I think it's, it's worthy to do that. I think the part, the other part you're asking about, I think, I'd rather you have that conversation first, and if you're still not satisfied, then we could add that in. Because like, most of us have had, have been part of that, I think, and, and, and very, very closely. I'm, I'm willing to get that part of the question out of the way, but I also no, definitely we'll, think we'll it's good it, to we'll, benchmark. We'll, we'll, we'll put it on, the, on, the, on a future agenda. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Donna? Actually, I've been very busy. This is for Mrs. Bolio. Sorry I haven't returned your call yet, but I did get it, and I would like to tell everybody that this year is the 50th anniversary of Nathan Hale. And as I get more information, I will get that off to you. Yeah, a lot of our schools have been around 50 years. Very good. So that's it for me. Now, for me, hi, Rep. Hi. Um, I would just like to make everybody aware that Family Science Night is on Thursday at okay. Fermi at 5. And I really encourage people to go because being I take a lot of science classes and 
we have the opportunity to have great demos and our teachers they they do a great job and we're we even love to see them so I mean to take your kids out I'm sure that they would love to see them they're they're great and we put a lot of work and time into it um, the Lamplighters production, Gone with the Gust, will be on Friday and Saturday, Friday at 7 and Saturday at 2 and 7. And vacation starts next week, so I hope everybody has a fun and safe <laughs> vacation. I know I will, so. Point of clarification, uh, you said it starts at 5? Yes. Six, so which one's wrong? Hmm. Probably mine. I would say 6. It said on the website 5, but um, it's probably changed. So. I don't want to show up late. <laughs> I'd go with six. So early. It's six o'clock. The students have to be there at five. Uh, oh, okay. So both oh, were nice. <laughs> Thank you. And can I ask, uh, what's the cause of the tickets? For the lamplighters? Yes. I'm not sure. Usually I pay at the door in five or seven. I would guess. I'm not sure, though. I can come back to you. Is there a with that. discount? <laughs> Just asking. <laughs> Mr. Janais? We were starting with her. I just went to both sides. You're, you're next. Oh, well, in the future? In the future? I think we should go. We can juggle it any way you want. It just, I yeah, just only because, I mean, every time then, you four will always get to talk after after me. I'll, I'll, never get to I'll, I'll juggle it. You. You okay. The last word, I guess, huh? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, going with uh, off of something that Kevin brought up, um, I think I know why he's 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 pursuing this, and it might behoove us to look every year at the lines because I mean, really, if somebody is living, if we draw the lines, and then somebody's just living a, a street away, I'm wondering, you know, just for that family, if we could redraw that line each year if that that happens because of where they live. Not because of daycare things and things like that, but you know, something to think of. Um, other than that, I don't have anything. Thank you, Tina. Just a couple things. Um, today, Hazardville Memorial uh, had their wellness run. They have those every half day at 115, and all the students come out and they run around the building. Um, my son was looking forward to it. Um, he asked me to go today. I couldn't get out today to go, but um, it's something they look forward to, and I think that's that's great that you do that. Um, the second thing is the art show was a couple of Friday nights ago and I had the opportunity to go and I, that was the first time I've gone and I was blown away. Some of the artwork was, all of the artwork was beautiful. Um, some of the senior portfolios, they had corners set up. Um, it, I, I ended up talking to some of the students and, and we have some very talented students in this town. Um, so I would love to see a growth in the art programs. Um, when I was there, Mrs. Goodnight had her string ensemble there, uh, which was great too. So that was that was really enjoyable. Um, also, I know I've mentioned the Lunch Bunch a couple times up here. Um, the Lunch Bunch runs a program in the summer out of St. Patrick's Church. They're having a pancake breakfast on Saturday, April 22nd at 9 a.m. at St. Patrick's Church. It's five dollars for adults and three dollars for children. Is it Saturday or Sunday? Sunday, April 22nd. Okay, I, that, that's fine. Very good. And that's it. Thank you. Chuck? Actually, um, I'm all set. Thank you. Oh, I was going to mention the, um, the Arch Festival also. I went Saturday morning, and even on a Saturday morning, you had a really good crowd there. Um, the drawings by the charcoal that the kids did were just amazing self-portraits. It was the ceramic work was, was really fantastic. It just shows you that the teachers are doing a, a of a great job in, in inspiring these kids to use their, their talents that they have in the, in the school system. And I encourage whatever we can do for these art classes and art programs to fund or encourage these kids to do it because we do have a lot of talent in this town. But that's basically it. Very good. I, I have a couple of things. I, I'd just like to uh, say thank you to Sen uh, Senator John Kissel, uh, Representative Kathy Tallarita, and Representative David Kiner for being in our last meeting. I found it very, very informative. I thought the questions were good. I was really pleased that they took their time to come here, and, and, uh, and hopefully they took some, uh, some of our questions back with them to the uh, legislature. So, uh, and I think uh, I, for one, would like to see them come, come back again at, uh, you know, in, a, in a couple of months. I don't know how the rest of you feel, but I, I, I thought it was very, very positive to have them be here. So. Uh, and I, they, they had offered to do that. 
I uh, echo uh, Tina's comments on the art festival and, and also Vinny's. Um, I hadn't been in a few years, and I went Friday night, and uh, I've seen a lot of the students' artwork as they progress through, but I hadn't seen it from seventh and eighth grade until uh, seniors. And it, for a guy who can't even draw stick figures, I was absolutely amazed at the quality of the work. It was professional in quality. And, and uh, uh, as some of you have already said, there's a lot of talent in our town, and, and I think we should be highlighting that. And that's a wonderful opportunity for, for folks to see the good things that go on in our schools. And my compliments to the music department, the art department, and all of the, the kids, the women's club, for being there. And although I didn't win any of the things that I put money down on, yeah, I, I, I'm really I, sad <laughs> I didn't get a phone call. So, I, you know, but uh, anyway, they got my money, and it's for a good cause. Um, I went to the town budget community conversation last Thursday, Dr. Gallagher. I think that's when it was. Um, unfortunately, there were only three citizens there that, that spoke, and they spoke, they spoke in favor of the education budget. But um, we need to get more folks out there to to come and, and, and share their opinions, pro or con. I mean, we've we've done our work on the budget. I, th I feel uh, comfortable that this board has put together a reasonable and responsible budget. Uh, I think we, we worked hard to, to get there, and I think we uh, kind of held on to our, our um, uh, wish list and, and got to pared it down to, uh, to the essentials. And, uh, but we need to hear from folks. And, and uh, we have uh, some more board meetings, some uh, council meetings, and, uh, and we have the budget hearing on the 25th, Dr. Gallagher, I believe it's at Enfield High School. Okay, is it 7 o'clock, I, I believe? I, I believe it is 7 is what they're hoping to start for. Okay. I haven't seen it yet. You know, come and hear the, the presentation, hear why we, we came up with what we had, hear the town, town uh, side of, of their presentation on the budget. Let us know what you think, pro and con. We need to hear from you. And uh, with only a few people there, and in fact, there were only a few people when we presented our budget to the, um, to the uh, town council. I mean, it takes the whole community to, to make this work, and we, we want to hear from you. And uh, even if you disagree with us, and if you agree with us, either way, we, we need to hear from you. So I invite you to come. Please make it a point. Email us. Uh, you know, get in touch with us one way or the other uh, if you have any questions about it. Superintendent's report. Be a little repetitive here because I think some of you stole most of my report. Um, Sorry. Spring vacation. Thankfully, we didn't have to use spring vacation for snow makeup days, so I was glad to see that. And as a result, school will not be in session on the week of April 16th through April 20th. Classes will resume on Monday, April 21st. We remind people that the central office is opened, but most of the school offices are closed. So if they need to go to a school, they should call the office first, and they can call central office if they can't get in. Um, we, we, there was mention here of Family Science Night. It's a very popular event. It's being held again at Fermi High School on Thursday, April 12th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's sponsored by Partners in Education, PI, and the teachers and students of the um, Enrico Fermi High School Science Department. And families are encouraged to attend. It's a family event, and it's always a, a nice event for the um, the, the students. Uh, my last item is a conversation with the commissioner and the board members have been invited to um, dialogue with S Stephen Pryor. He's the new commissioner for the Connecticut State Department of Education. And this is an invitation only event which will be held on Thursday, April 12th, starting at 7 p.m. in Our Lady of Mount Carmel Hall. Um, the topic will be Senate Bill 24, which is an act concerning educational competitiveness. And I know all the board members know about that. It's basically the governor's proposals for education. It's been in the paper a lot. Um, the event was arranged by um, Representative Kathy Tallarita, and also in attendance will be Senator Kissel and Representative Kiner. So you're welcome to attend. And I, I plan to be there, and your superintendent-elect plans to be there as well. Great. Thank you. Yes, Tony. I want to bring this to the attention of the board because I know that how hard you've worked on all of this this year. Uh, regarding the safe school climate um, um, law and th that statute and so on, you have passed a policy, you have p updated the policy, you have given us a safe school climate plan. There's an organization now for, for everything. Uh, every school has a safe school climate specialist, there's a safe school climate committee at every school. Today we concluded workshops for our staff, for teachers and administrators today marked the conclusion for, at the secondary level. So now all of our schools have been in service and we've worked together with the governor's prevention uh, office to do this. So uh, there's a lot of water on the bridge and I just want to thank you for your attention to that matter. But I, I know that the community from time to time inquires about these things, but uh, we've accomplished a great deal. And all that information is on the, uh, the school's website as well. So thank you. Uh, we thank you, Tony, for kind of shepherding that through. I know the work that you've put into that, getting that stuff done with the schools, and we appreciate it. 
Uh, board committee reports, are there any reports? Joyce? Excuse me. The curriculum committee met last night. We had uh, serious discussions about a number of topics. The three to five reorganization, the TAG, a report that we received at the last meeting, and we feel that it's a time to start posting that open position for a teacher. We reviewed what the educators who are doing the iPad pilot are being asked to do. Mm -hmm. And while we all felt it was much too short a time, we understand it had to fit because we're getting pressure about our technology decisions. We reviewed the books for both Spanish and French and chemistry. The uh, language books are the result of the curriculum committee in the past being shocked at what the language teachers <laughs> mentioned about having their old books and feeling that they had no opportunity to get new ones. So we suggested that they start the process to choose the books, which they have done, and they will be put in the library on May 1st, so beginning the first day of the month for the 30-day period. So anyone out there who is interested in reviewing the language books and the chemistry book may go to the library and look at them and add your comments if necessary. We also heard the plan for the development of curriculum for to meet the common core standards that are quickly coming to us. They actually have to be in place for the 13-14 school year. And right after that, we have to be sure we're totally prepared for the high school reform. So the curriculum development which will begin this summer uh, is something that's going to take significant time and we need to talk about when and how it can be done apart from during the summer because of the, the fact that it's got to be done from K to 12. And while we're in process of buying textbooks, new textbooks that will meet to the extent that the Pro, uh, the printers decide it's possible, meet the Common Core standards within the textbook, it still doesn't necessarily completely give us a, a curriculum because our curriculums are designed to meet the state standards, which of course are being brought from the Common Core standards, but like SRB, SRBI, excuse me, where Connecticut always has to make some kind of a change, everybody else in the world calls that RTI, mm -hmm. Um, we don't know what will come from, from, or we don't know everything. The common core standards that are currently available are for math and English. But there are standards being developed for math, for science and world and history, social studies, I guess is the proper term we use these days, uh, which will be coming out possibly the, the science one is in draft form right now, and that could be available in September. But that's the nature of our discussion at our meeting last night. Am I correct that the, uh, the curriculum, all the curricula have to be up, updated to uh, address the Common Core and the new standards? Well, it's not just an update, because the I format think. in which they will be produced, right <coughs> now they're in a two-column format. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a minimum of three, and it will cover different materials than the current curriculum does. So it's really a rewrite, not merely an update. Okay. And it has more depth. Very good. Thank you. More information. Are there any other, uh, are there any other committee reports? Yes. Tina? I have an update on the high school consolidation. Very good. Uh, we had our first community conversation last Tuesday. We had about 22 people that came to the meeting, um, including elected officials. It would have been nice to have a larger turnout. Uh, we did have some residents that spoke. Um, uh, one of their concerns was how are we going to transition the students and how thoughtfully we can do that. I think uh, one of the things that 
we understand as a committee now is that the reason this consolidation is happening, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, is because of the High School Reform Act in 2016 and the declining enrollment in town. We have scheduling issues um, at both of the schools. There's not enough students to take the classes. Um, and we can't meet the current graduation criteria in 2016 with both schools. So being that we're going to put it on the referendum, I think what people need to understand is that a referendum will have to happen whether we're doing it to one high school or to two. And the fact that we could do it to one high school and get almost a 72% reimbursement from the state and um, the construction costs are at an all-time low, it would be more beneficial to the town because it would eliminate our scheduling conflicts. Um, we would have a broader school community. So I think we really need to get out there and, and let the community know that it has to happen one way or the other. If we end up having to fix both schools, we'll get little to no reimbursement from the state because we'll just be revamping science wings. Um, and both Brian Brown and Steve Sargowski were talking about the benefit of having all the students in one location. Um, Brian Brown spoke about the fact that they have math study halls that helps the kids with math. And Steve Sargowski was saying the curriculum possibilities are endless when you have all the students in one building. We have 11 teachers currently going between Enfield High and Fermi to teach, which means they're losing duty periods as well as students traveling between buildings, which means they're having to pick up a study hall just for travel time. So I definitely think we need to get that word out there. And I, I know that you guys know that, but I felt like that's something I needed to say because it's not just about closing a school, cutting everything in half. The savings could be approximately $2 million a year, um, you know, just on energy efficiency alone because neither building is, is, is efficient. Um, they also touched base on as, as to why Enfield High was a good choice over Fermi, which was a great... Um, a great thing to finally put out there because that's been a, a hot topic. Um, on Thursday night, the architects actually presented the plan for the new high school. Um, Jen Rancourt was there with me. It was a great plan. I think what I liked the most about the plan was the fact that they could do this construction and it would cause little to no disruption to the students actually in the school. So it would call for a revamp of the proposed timeline that we've all seen and have had questions on um, because it looks like the students that are slated to go to Enfield High could go to Enfield High and the students that could go to Fermi could go to Fermi um, because it seemed that there was a concern of overcrowding at Fermi. How would we fit everyone at Fermi? Um, and there was a possibility of a senior year rolling over to Fermi, but it looks like that's not going to happen um, with the new plan. So I thought that that was definitely a positive in the, in the right direction, causing at least dis the least disruption for the students. Um, and our next community conversation will be April 26th, um, I believe at 7 o'clock at the Enfield High Auditorium. Um, and at that point, the architects will be presenting what they presented to us. So, Isn't that the same night as the budget? no, that's 25th. the 25th. 25th, 25th is the next budget. day. 26th is what you said. I thought you said 25th. No, no I said the 26th. 26. We, we were aware of that when we scheduled the meeting. There were some emails we today. To yes. We well, yeah, we were trying to have it the week after so that there wouldn't be three meetings in one week with the budget hearing and then a board of ed meeting. But it's going to, and people are welcome to go. Um, Jen, Always goes, I know Thursday we have a conflict, so if you'd like to go, their are Thursdays at 7 o'clock in the Enfield High Library. Um, but the committee is definitely working hard, and um, I enjoy my time on there. Very good. I'd encourage you to go. I went this Thursday, and uh, just the, the, to see the draft from the architect, it really just puts in perspective what we've been talking about for these last you know, 18 months here, what we're looking at. And I think it will help people understand what all the things we've been talking about. And it will answer an awful lot of questions. So I invite you to go. You're welcome to go there. And, and also, please come to the community conversation on the 26th. Right. Okay. I, I would say, too, I think what people need to understand is we're not build, building this grandiose, huge, massive high school. Um, you know, they have certain standards they have to stay under for the state reimbursement. So they take, you know, an eight-year projection at our enrollment, and they take the enrollment as it is today in order to project. So if you did have an insurge of um, population, that you would be able to handle that at the new high school. Um, it, and it would meet all of our graduation requirements. 
uh, for the 2016 with our science labs and our technology. Can and we got copies in our email? Yeah. Can I just make a yeah, comment? Yeah, go ahead, Jen. I was at the meeting and I was blown away by the architect's design. And um, Tina and I sat there because we went through, we were at the meetings when the when you had everybody from the department heads come in mm. and say what they would like to see and everything like that. And they really facilitated a lot of that. Prep rooms for the science, um, the special ed being located you know, centrally and close to the nurse's office. Everything, a lot of the things that they department heads asked for definitely were encompassed and we were yeah, Tina and I were very very excited about that they were actually um, very focused Joyce you'll be happy to know on steam yeah. there would be a whole steam edition for your science technology everything uh, was definitely designed for steam in mind it's called the steam room the steam room. Um, Peter <laughs> would you make sure that we have there, there were parents that came at the last meeting that were looking for numbers and I think you took some meticulous notes, but you know I'm sure they're going to be looking for the costs. Um, all those things that they were asking for, can we make sure we're number heavy this time? They'll be there. They, okay. they, they were talking about that the other yeah, night. Yeah, we discussed it um, as far as the costs with the architects on Thursday night, and then we talked about how to get a cost for what it would, what it would be to update both wings at the high school. Um, and I think people are going to be surprised it comes in. <laughs> the same or higher to almost renovate two wings and, and then to get a brand new building and alleviate some of the issues that we're facing. And the thing is, is if we stay with two buildings, we never solve the problem that we have. Correct. We don't we just never, so, we don't solve it. We don't save money either. We don't, we, you won't and save And we don't money. save education because right. we're going to continue to cut. Yeah, the one building is the, the best. Well, we encourage you to we encourage you to come and thank you for reporting uh, th th those details to us. Is there any other committee reports? There is no approval of the council payroll, correct? And there's no unfinished business, so we're at new business uh, number uh, item 15A, approval for Kite to apply for the uh, Graustein Memorial Trust Grant. I have a motion. 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 Second. Motion by Donna, seconded by Vinnie. Uh, to approve that, is there any any discussion? Then um, roll call, Kathy, please. Mrs. Rancourt? Yes. Mrs. Suzak? Yes. Mr. Feely? Yes. Mr. Grady? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Janitis? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Right. Chairman Neville? <laughs> yes. Motion passes. Okay, 15B. We have an item here for receipt of an action upon recommendation of the superintendent of schools concerning teacher contract non-renewals in accordance with Connecticut General Statutes 10-151. Mr. My understanding, Dr. Gallagher, do we have any detail there, or do, uh, do, do we ju just have to make a motion and then read the? Uh, no, this the, is the, motion. The, 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 that is the motion, and I, I think Mrs. Saul is prepared to read it. You do have in your packet a, a listing of where these teachers, what their subject is, and what school they're at. But um, basically, you have 20 names that we're recommending for non-renewal, and it's it's mainly for budgetary reasons, right here. Is what you're looking at. Okay. Can I have somebody make that motion? And this is the motion. Correct. But does it need to be seconded as well? Yes, yeah, seconded after it's made. Joyce will read. Very good. Okay. <laughs> I stand corrected, Mrs. Hall. This is a motion I have made for several years in a row. I don't like it. And I don't like it particularly because I've read the same names more than one year in a row. So, but it's shorter this year, so that makes me a little happier. I move that the contract of employment of Anthony Allegro, Jess Bartram, James Barrett, Melissa Bergeron, Daniel Barassa, Jenny Bunnick, Charles Carrera, Matthew Harrington, Marcy Hittleman, Lisa Hunter, Hunter Daniel Klaparath, Alexa Kalinsky, Christina Mazzola, Daniel Paradise, Alexandra Pisner, Christopher Ciosio, Samantha Segru, Sally Tigg, Tyler Wells, and Laura Wisniewski be not be removed for the following year upon its expiration at the end of the 2011-2012 school year. 
and that the superintendent of schools be directed to advise such persons in writing of this action. Uh, seconded by Donna. Is there any discussion? Roll, roll call, please. Mrs. Rancourt? Yes. Mrs. Suzak? Yes. Mr. Feely? Yes. Mr. Grady? No. Ms. Hall? Reluctantly, yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Janitis? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Chairman Neville? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. We have no executive session, so it's... Um, Motion to adjourn. Second. Seconded by Mr. Feely. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We're adjourned. What room are we uh, going to? Skidder Cobra Room. <laughs>